In the previous uh, video, we talked about chemogenetic theory and the three parts of it. Now, we let us discuss uh, the first part. The first part we said is chemogeny. Chemogeny means how uh, when the conditions were not so favorable, the temperature was high, oxygen was not available, in presence of UV rays and uh, lightning, certain chemical compounds were formed. And this concept was given by Operin and Helden. It was experimentally proved by two scientists, Ure and Miller. So the experimental proof is what we are talking of. Of chemogenetic theory was given by two scientists, Ure and Miller. They performed an experiment trying to create the same conditions, pretty much same conditions as they existed at the time of origin of life. What they did was they took a round bottom flask. In this round bottom flask, They introduced two electrodes. Two electrodes were introduced into this and an electric current was passed through it. So this was actually, when this electric current was generated, this was actually a substitute for lightning. So these were the electrodes. The gases which were kept here were Ammonia, methane and hydrogen in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. Because these were the main gases which existed when the life originated, they chose these three gases. And this condition was maintained. Now let us see the complete assembly, what exactly they did. Now this round bottom flask was connected to a long tube and this long tube had a condenser. In this cold water was circulated and when this water circulated whatever was happening here that would get condensed here and they collected it. So this condensed liquid was collected for analysis then it was passed into another compartment where it was again heated and sent back to the same round water flask. So this is how this setup was created. Now let us take quickly this setup and see what exactly is happening. This is the round bottom flask. This is the electrode and by passing the electric current a charge, a spark was generated. These were the gases. This is the condenser and here this complete device was heated. It was heated. Now what exactly they did they allowed this experiment to continue for seven days. So the experiment was performed for seven days. And time to time, they took out the sample. This liquid which condensed here, let us say the liquid is condensing here. And this is all that liquid. So when it is heated, it would turn into its gaseous state again and would, would, would go it back into this round bottom flask. So from here, time to time, they took out the sample. So this was the sample actually, which was getting collected here. When they analyzed this sample. Let us write one more important thing here, though we have written it here, the gases which were ta taken, gases were ammonia, methane 
and hydrogen in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. The temperature was maintained around 100 degrees Celsius. Temperature was around 100 degrees Celsius and it was com continuously heated. When they analyzed this sample, they found certain molecules. So, in the sample, the mo molecules or the compounds which were obtained were glycine, which is an amino acid, glutamic acid, which is again another amino acid, aspartic acid, purines and pyrimidines, and pyrimidines, that is the nitrogen bases, and some other aldehydes. And these substances are found in the living organisms which exist today also. So, what experimental proof did this experiment give us? It gave us that what Operin and Heldin told us about the chemogeny that when life originated, the conditions were high temperature, UV rays, uh, lightning was present, the gases were predominantly these and something must have happened resulting into the formation of chemical compounds. That was the chemogeny part of the theory. And this experiment proves the same thing by taking the same type of gases instead of lightning, the energy was provided in the form of the spark and when this experiment is continued for a few days, the sample on analysis gives us some simple compounds. That is, some amino acids are there, some sugars are there, some aldehydes are also there. So if this thing can happen in a lab in such situations, the same thing must have happened on the earth. And that is how the life must have evolved. First, the chemical compounds. Then the biogeny part, that is some molecules, must have aggregated to form self-replicating DNA type of molecules. And then the biogenic part followed by the evolution part. Now we also know that when life originated, we believe that the first living forms must have had RNA as the genetic material. And this was told to us or this actually um, idea was given to us by the experiments performed by Dr. Khurana where he in vitro developed RNAs. So it was believed that the first organisms which were formed had RNA as the genetic material then DNA replaced that RNA. But chemical combination of those substances must have taken place in this manner. So this experiment of Ure and Miller is considered as the experimental proof of the chemogenetic theory and out of which the chemogeny part which was given by Operin and